Kyle. Yes. Five, four, three, nose. This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. That's some good news from the Mad Canadian himself. The old fashioned is back in stock. Be sure to check out all the great seasonings, such as the old fashioned which is a very interesting spice. It has kind of like a sweet bourbon-y taste to it with a little kick of bitter in it. Be sure to get it while it's back in stock at the Hurry. Mad Canadian. You never know. At the, yes, <laughs> at the MadCanadianBBQ.com. Some other favorites here. I'm going to go off of rib, the rib rubs that he recommends. Just mentioned the old-fashioned. This core, which is a... Is a kind of a knockoff, not really knockoff, but similar to like the Four <laughs> Horsemen, which is a which is a very spicy blend. The Coffee and Q, one of Jared's favorites, we've mentioned a number of times, and the Two Border, which is a maple, which is a maple sweet flavor seasoning with a little bit of red pepper flakes in it. Very good to put in like a breakfast meal. Be sure to check out all of these at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Be sure to use the promo code. Sloopcast10, Sloopcast10 at checkout for 10% off. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This is where the music goes. <laughs> YouTubers don't get the music. Sorry, YouTubers. Blame YouTube. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm feeling pretty good. How are you, Jared? I'm doing all right. Uh, Mad Canadian's in the Discord uh, listening live, and he wants you to know that you nailed it. Awesome. <laughs> I know I screwed it up two time, two weeks in a row, but it's good to nail it there. There you go. We're gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna blame it on the the alcohol here. <laughs> well, liquid courage. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Although normal, we normally do this much earlier on a Sunday. So, are you blaming the fact that you got it correct? On the on the liquid courage because the last two times when you messed it up, we recorded at like ten in the morning and you were stone so at least I assume you were stone sober. Sure, <laughs> sure. Busted. Kyle's an alcoholic. All right, let's, all right. <laughs> let's let's get into it here. Uh, we got a few things to talk about in today's episode. We got a surprise commit for the Ohio State twenty twenty two class. Then we'll go ahead and break Surprise. down a little bit of the twenty. We'll get we'll get into Surprise, it. We'll go in. We'll get into it. Um, update on the twenty one and the twenty twenty two class. Some updates on the ACC and SEC announcements this past week, and answering your Ask Sloopcast questions. Does that sound good, Jared? That sounds great. Um, here here's where I'm. I don't know. I'm I'm still a little stuck. I'm still a little stuck on one thing that you called it a surprise mm -hmm. announcement. I'm a little stuck on that. Uh, what's that? Brother? You broke up again. Sorry, this is Discord's fault. It's not your fault. The weather? Oh, no, no, no. We we aren't we aren't talking about the weather. No, it's just, you know, he's the number one player in the state of Ohio. He's been number two on my most likely to commit list in mm -hmm. the 2022 class. Uh, and, and then you're calling him a surprise commitment? Well, I guess surprise in terms of when? Mm, like I, 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 right now, the announcement. But either way, let's beating around the bush here. <laughs> Over... <laughs> Last week we had Ohio State had a, a commit from 2022 
four star off outside linebacker Gabe Powers from Marysville, Ohio. Currently in the early, 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 early recruiting cycle for the 2022 class. He is ranked 45th in the 24 7 sports composite. Second best outside linebacker in the country. Number one in the state of Ohio. Yeah. Um, Gabe Powers, huge pickup for Ohio State. Great inside or outside linebacker. He's currently an outside linebacker, as Kyle said. Um, seeing as how he's uh, pretty young, uh, he would, at least under normal circumstances, have uh, two full seasons ahead of him in high school yet. COVID, yada, yada, yada. Who, who knows how much actual football that is. But for the sake of, you know, He's he's only, I guess, a rising junior, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So a lot of people think he might grow into more of an inside linebacker. Your inside linebackers are typically a little bit bigger than your outside linebackers. So a lot of people think he might grow into an inside linebacker, but a, a linebacker nonetheless. Uh, as I stated... Let me before... ask you... No, go right ahead. Let me ask you this, though. Looking at his size here, 6'4", 220. Yeah, definitely inside linebacker size, but potentially maybe defensive end. What do you think? Uh, I mean, who knows? You know, how big does he? You know, is is six four? Is that is that how tall he is? Period. Who who knows? Rising junior uh, could very well be done growing. Might not be. Um, right now, they're looking him at looking at him as a linebacker. That's. That's the plan. That's the idea. That's how they're recruiting him. He's a linebacker. But, you know, who who knows? Guys change positions all the time once they get into college. I mean, I have not- Simon, not not Simon. Um, oh, I'm going to blank on his name. He's the he's defensive. I wanted to say John Simon for whatever reason, um, but that's not right. He's now the defensive end for the for the Bengals. Yeah, I'm totally blanking on his name. You, can you can you help? <laughs> Any help, Mad Canadian? Any help in the Discord? <laughs> I'm totally blanking on his name. Uh, but he started off I'm, as. Sorry, what? I'm drawing a yeah. I'm drawing a complete blank on it too it's... point is is that he came in as a safety got moved to linebacker and ends up being a, an elite defensive end at ohio state so who knows sam hubbard sam hubbard thank you i wasn't even close but yeah uh sam hubbard like i said you never know um juju smith mm-hmm. was recruited into usc as a safety and now he's yeah. one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. Like, you don't know. But the point is, is that right now, Ohio State sees him as a linebacker. Yeah. Well, I've never seen this for a of a um, Ohio State commit here. One of the crystal ball predictions had a, had a 10 for him to yeah. pick Ohio State. So, so maybe now you see why I'm pushing back on you calling it a surprise commitment. <laughs> surprise again I know, back, I know surprise, I know I know I know I'm just giving you crap whatever <laughs> definitely definitely good early definitely good early get for Ohio State even if it was a lock or not a surprise if you're a Jared here yeah uh, <laughs> but, but yeah um, with that said let's go ahead and talk about the 2021 and the 2022 class here sure um I would say not a ton of of updates as far as the 2021 class goes. Um, Tristan Lee, no real updates there. I think Ohio State's in second place still. USC still has a, not USC, LSU still has a pretty big lead for Tristan Lee. Derek Davis Jr., I think they... I I heard or read somewhere, you know, he's probably looking to commit sometime in September, but I, I still, you know, I see that as a 50-50 shot still, mm-hmm. um, despite 
the crystal balls and a lot of the public opinion pushing him to Penn State. I, I just, I don't know. I, I, I see that as, as I, there are people who I really respect who are saying Penn State. And there are people who I really respect who are saying Ohio State. So I, I know uh, Givler and and Berm, I think, are just saying it's a it's a 50-50 proposition right now. And those are two of, you know, two of maybe the four or five people who I trust the most, whose opinions I trust the most. And, you know, they're saying it's very possible. Um, so, I, I you know, I'm just still working on that. I haven't changed uh, – Lee is still six. Davis is still five. I still think Ohio State, again, probably has like a 50-50 proposition with Jagger Burton. Slightly better than that with Tywin Malone. Uh, no updates on JTT from, from last week's episode. I, I, I said he's slipping a bit, but nothing has changed as far as my opinion on last week's episode. And Emeka Buka, we're just, we're just waiting. We're just waiting for that to happen. I don't believe any smoke about Oklahoma or USC or Clemson or this or that. It's the Mecca book is going to come to Ohio state. He just hasn't announced it yet. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, so kind of an update on the 2021 here class. Sure. You know, we mentioned a little bit, a little bit about last week here, Alabama is still surging up. Uh, they are 35 points beyond Ohio state. I think when we really dug into this, Ohio State was like 40-plus points ahead of anybody else. But now here we are, Alabama surging ahead. Not ahead. Alabama has the same amount of five stars as Ohio State does right now. Four, st- They have four or five stars right now. They have 16 total commits. They have a total of 280.75 points to Ohio State's 305.5. It's a lot. the the higher The more points you get, the harder it is to accumulate more points. So that's yeah. one thing. Not all points are created equal. The other thing to keep in mind is that, like I said, Emeka Buka. That's another five star player who's practically in the pocket right now. That's a sixty six percent chance, or sixty six. 99 is what I meant to say. A 99% chance Mecca Buka's coming to Ohio State. Top 10 player in the entire class. Five-star player. JTT, another five-star player. Is still incredibly, incredibly likely to come to Ohio State. It's still Ohio State over the field. Is Oregon a player? Yes, Oregon's a player. But it's still 75 80% likely that JTT comes to comes to Columbus. So I mean you, I mean you look at JTT and Emeka, it's two top seven there. So yeah. if Ohio State is fortunate enough to get both of those commits, three players in the top seven yeah. going to Ohio State, that is ridiculous. It's I, I don't know so if that it's would completely it, unprecedented or not, but it's darn close. Mm-hmm. With those two Added on to Ohio State, there is no way that Alabama would be able to catch Ohio State. No, no, I, I almost. Now, I, it's real close that a, a Mecca would seal it up for Ohio State. Yeah, Ohio State right now has an average is just a tad under ninety five right now, and then Alabama is just a tad under ninety four and a half. So Ohio State so has a pretty comfortable average per recruit too yeah yeah it and um mad canadian who's listening in asks what if it's just one I, if it's just one it's almost certain i mean mm-hmm. that's why i'm not worried about ohio say it's gonna win unless there's unless there's a uh, decommitments that we're not anticipating right now. And I'm not anticipating any decommitments right now, unless there are some, unless there are some decommitments that I'm completely going to be blindsided by it's I, Ohio state's going to get this number one overall class. 
Emeka Ibuka will sign eventually. He will commit eventually. And that almost seals it up for Ohio State. And that's just Ibuka. That's not even considering what if JTT also commits, which, like I said, he's far more likely to do than not do. That doesn't take into consider Tywin Malone, who Ohio State is still favored over the field, and he's just outside the top 50. Mm-hmm. Ohio State is still in the running. And I want to say in the running, I mean just this close. I mean, like, highly favored. Ohio State is highly favored for three players who are basically in the top 50. Malone's at 53. So you add a Mecca plus Tywin Malone. That's that's game over as far as winning the class. And that mm-hmm. doesn't even take into account Tristan Lee, who Ohio State's in very good position for, but behind. That doesn't take into account um, Derek Davis Jr., who is just one spot ahead of Tywin Malone. But, you know, like I said, that's that's 50-50 at best. That doesn't take into account Jagger Burton, who is I'm I'm just yeah, ten four, thanks for the clarification, says says TMC. I'm just enjoying hearing myself talk right now, TMC. It doesn't even take into consideration Jagger Burton, who is just outside the top one hundred at one eighteen, who Ohio State is fifty fifty more for. So I think if Ohio State gets even if they get just get the one the JTT or a Mecca and they get couple of other people too i think if they get above i think the mark the number mark is 315 i think if they get over 315 mm-hmm. or the points over at 24 7 sports they'll lock this this uh, recruiting class if you look at the past few recruiting seasons here what was georgia's you know, a couple years ago because georgia it was the field. It was the it was the class where they got Justin Fields. Uh, so that that's the one. That's the one exception, and I'll get to here. So 2015, yeah. Alabama, oh, Alabama had 311. USC had 310. In 2016, it was 302, 295. So a little bit lower. 2017 is when Alabama had that ridiculous class. They had 29 commits, or 18 of those. Well. 18 four stars and six five stars. That was that were really ridiculous class. Had just under two, excuse me, 324 for that class. 2018, which is the one you were thinking of with Georgia, they had 323, but Ohio State had 317. And then if you class. if you move Justin Fields over, <laughs> which is what happened. Yeah, Ohio State has the number one then, essentially. Essentially. And 2019, Alabama had 317, Georgia's 309, and last year, 313, 310, Georgia and Alabama, which is, like, looking at these numbers here, it is just ridiculous. And, and I think everybody knows this already. Just seeing the numbers here is just how under de- underperforming Georgia really is. Well, that class fell apart in a in a bunch of ways. Not just Justin Fields, but you know, that's you you see Austin has joined the chat, at least for a moment. Um you can I mean, Justin Fields was the number one player for Georgia in that class. And he was the number two overall player in the entire year that year. Um and he he's you take that player away and you know that that hurts the class terribly right there and then like i said i know that they lost brenton cox who they flipped from ohio state i wonder if if ohio state had held on to cox if they would have had the number one overall class even before we consider justin fields and then brenton cox is in florida now so committed to ohio state well it's flipped to georgia and has now transferred to florida well, it's not so much just like one recruiting class, which they had that ridiculous one where they had the number one recruiting class in 2018. You see it in the past five or six years. They were top three in almost all of them. minus one year where they were like fifth or whatever, though. 
So it's just one class. It, they've been pretty consistent in the recruiting trail. Yeah. They just come up short every year, though. We use the You're term... You're in a conference with Bama ago, is kind of what it boils down that, to. It does, too. But in a way, too, there's been some years, too, where they... Are they the new Clemsoning, essentially? I know yeah. Clemson's not Clemsoning yeah. anymore, but are they the new Clemsoning? Yeah, I mean, you could say the same thing about USC, who you mentioned had the number two overall class with an incredibly high score a few years ago. And, you know, they obviously did nothing with that. So, yeah. so before we jump to the 2022 class, speaking of Clemson, Clemson's really jumped up, too. They've had a couple of commits this last week. They added two new four stars to the recruiting class, jump up from six to third right now so looking at the top three no surprise ohio state alabama clemson yeah like i said a few months ago everyone was like oh bama's recruiting dynasty is over no just give it time clemson lost a couple players a couple significant players the number one overall player who's still uncommitted potentially on his way to USC. The other one's Jordan Hancock, who is now committed to Ohio state. And they fell in the rankings a bit that, and just other teams started performing and, and passed them. And everyone's like, Oh, what about Clemson? Eh, Clemson's fine. Don't worry about Clemson. Don't worry about Ohio state. Don't worry about Bama. It's fine. Um, Austin asks if they had beaten, and he's talking about Georgia, beaten Bama when Tua saved them, would the narrative be different? Uh, the narrative would be different, would it not? Yeah, of course it is. You're either a national course, championship, yes. you're either a national champion, or you're not. It's the same thing with Ohio State back in 2014. The narrative would have been so much different if Ohio State didn't win a national championship that year. They lost to Alabama. Nobody yeah. would be, everybody would just be just, maybe not necessarily laughing Ohio State, but not giving them as much respect. Yeah. Because if winning a national championship or losing to another SEC school or whatever. But so by the way, it's, like, it's just. Well, but no, they would be Georgia. Yep. I mean, that's what it would be. Ohio State wins the national championship in 2015. They haven't since, despite always being in the top three or four recruiting classes. Despite in, always in being that's... right there going to the playoffs or in the playoffs. So would the narrative be different? Yeah, absolutely. Because what would the Ohio State narrative be right now had, you know, Cardell Jones and Ezekiel Elliott not taken over that game against Bama? If Cardell Jones wasn't even, up to even the before challenge, that, even before that game too. yeah, before that yeah, game too. yeah, no, absolutely. Whether it be the Michigan game or the Wisconsin game, if Cardell Jones wasn't up to the challenge of, of taking over the team and winning a national title. Yeah. Ohio, the entire Ohio state would be like, Oh yeah, you got all these recruiting classes, but you haven't won a national championship since 2002. That would be, you know, that would be the narrative for Ohio State. It's, it's a right. zero. It's a zero. <laughs> sports is zero sum, man. Either you're your national title or holder or you're not. All right, let's let's move on to the 2022 recruiting class here. With the addition of Gabe Powers, Ohio State now has four commits, including. I'm going to have to help me here, Jared. I think right. it's uh, Jair. Jair, Jair Brown. Brown. I got that, yes. Uh, CJ Hicks and Tegra. Uh, Chibola. Oh boy. Chibola. Yeah, it's uh, from T Westchester, S Ohio. Yeah, T-S-C-H equals C-H. I'm, I'm looking for that vowel be after the T there. But yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, there. it's a, the, the T-S-H is just a C-H. In the, I, I believe, Nigerian, I believe is where that is. Um, T I double. Dear. Oh, he's he's <laughs> making a Winnie the Pooh reference. Yes, he is. 
Okay. Um, so all, all, all four, that's what all happens four, when you have young kids. You make Winnie the Pooh references uh, <laughs> from the all, Mad Canadian. All four, commi- all four commits for our state, all from the state of Ohio. Sort of. That's the narrative right now. Ohio State's locking up the Ohio State border again, and Ohio State's recruiting Ohio again, and, and all of this. You know, they. I think they're getting dang close at this point to having as many Ohio recruits. Anyway, the point is, is that a Jair Brown uh, was in New Orleans when he committed, and. Mm-hmm transferred to Cincinnati. So I'm just just pointing that out is that he was in New Orleans and then transferred. According to 24/7, he's currently in Westchester, Ohio. Yeah, yeah, he's he's in Cincinnati now. I uh, you know, but he, you know, like I said, was in Louisiana when he committed. So if I'm looking at the the top Ohio prospects for the 2020 class, mm-hmm. 2022 class. Number one, three, four, and five right now. One, number two right now is Neil Wagner. Offensive tackle. Offensive from tackle Dayton. From, from Dayton. Yep, from Wayne, uh, more precise. Don't, I have to look deeply in here. Yeah, no, no offers yet from Ohio State. That will probably soon change, though, but... Sort of a... a, It's weird to call someone a late riser, considering we're talking about an entire recruiting class ahead of time. Um, But uh, he was... He's a recent addition into the top, you know, five, top ten in in Ohio rankings. Um, So maybe coming on the scene a bit late it the rankings for 2022 you can toss them not toss them out but take all of the 2022 rankings with a grain of salt no camp season oh, yeah. you know evaluate not some of these player i mean there there's entirely possible there's some player with nothing but mac offers right now who grew 4 inches over the summer but just no one knows <laughs> it's just it's it's the information's just not out there there was no camp season um right now it looks like there will be um you know your your typical practice season in ohio um he's probably eating mad canadian seasonings that's a that's a cheap additional ad because you're in the Discord right now, but you you got it. Congratulations. Um, yeah, it's looking at comparing the two offensive tackles for 2022. Again, going into their junior year, whether or not they have football this year or not. Looking at looking at the size of them, Chibola, six five, three forty. It's a big boy. Yep. <laughs> That's a big boy there. Six five three forty. Remember that number three forty six five. Yeah. Wagner, six six two forty. Yeah. That guy needs Wagner probably needs to put on a little bit more weight to be an offensive tackle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah, it's yeah. coming. It's, Going into his junior year and all yes. that. Yes. So like, like I said, it's and by the way, that number could be completely out of date and out of whack. Like he might weigh 50 more pounds right now. You know what I'm saying? Like without all of the camps and without, you know, evaluation and the measurements, all everything 24 seven sports, which is the primary thing we use to, to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Aggregate all of this data. Well, they aggregate the data and then we read it on the podcast. But that that you know, when we talk about someone's rankings or how tall they are, or how much they weigh, we're getting all this stuff from twenty four seven. But they're way behind right now, and it's not their fault. This they're normally pretty golden with their measurements, but no camp season. It's it's just it is what it is. These players aren't being evaluated right now, so just take it all with a grain of salt. 
but yeah, Ohio is locking down Ohio right now. Um, and I, I really, really like the four kids they have in the class. I think that probably goes without saying, um, and I don't know, Kyle, you want to roll through, I have a top 10 list again. It's pretty absurd and take this with a grain of salt too. I have no business putting together a top 10 list. Cause I don't think Ohio state has a real solid top 10 list at this point, but I, I do have a top 10 list most likely commit to Ohio state. And I already have on top of the four Ohio state players committed to this class, Ohio players from the state of Ohio, that is, committed to Ohio State. I already have three additional Ohio players in this top ten. Okay. So you want to roll through this top ten with me? Sure, let's do it. Uh, number one, and I've had him I've had him number one in a while. I'm honestly a little bit surprised he hasn't committed yet. Uh, offensive tackle Blake Miller from Strongsville, Ohio. Um, there was a lot of thought for a while that he was just going to sort of commit almost immediately after Ohio state offered him. He didn't. Um, but there's, I, I still believe that he ends up being an Ohio state Buckeye before too long. Uh, number two on the list is Deshaun McCullough, uh, Deshaun McCullough, a uh, defensive back from Kansas, or is it, Miz- I think it's Kansas. Kansas. It is Kansas. Well, he's, he's, Kansas? He's from Kansas City, which, if you, you know, could be Kansas City or Missouri. It, it's it's both, but it's um. Mm-hmm. He has Ohio ties, so don't don't let the Kansas thing throw you off too much. Dad played for the Red Hawks in Miami. Brother plays, I think, still actively plays for the Red Hawks in Miami. This is an Ohio family. Dad is a coach for the Chiefs. That's why he's in Kansas City. So Ohio kid, Ohio ties, just sort of displaced at the moment. But obviously a coach's son at a very high level. Um, I think also probably pretty inevitable that he's an Ohio State Buckeye soon. I'm going to say soon on Deshaun McCullough. Might, yeah. Well, go over to... One state over to Missouri. You're number three here. You have wide receiver Luther Burden. Yeah, I uh, like Luther Burden a whole lot too. Um, it just it feels like the type of guy that Ohio State swoops in and grabs. Um, Ohio State has had an incredible amount of luck getting not just players, uh, because I believe Luther Burden's in the St. Louis area, not just getting players out of St. Louis lately, but getting wide receivers, especially out of St. Louis. And it, it, this just, again, it, it feels like the exact type, exact type of player that a Ohio state goes after and B that Ohio state gets. So it, it almost feels inevitable. Gotcha. All right. Number four you have here is defensive tackle Caden Curry from Indiana. By far the best player in the state of Indiana right now. Um, and so we were talking on last week's podcast when we were talking about basketball recruiting, we were talking a bit about how the best basket, how, you know, Ohio state locked down the, uh, the best basketball player in the state of Ohio last week, or at least we talked about it on last week's podcast and how important it is for Ohio state to do that in the basketball realm, because that's not a given as as much as it is a given for Ohio State football. So, and we talked about how the best player in the state of Ohio oftentimes will end up playing basketball for Kentucky, playing basketball for Pitt, playing basketball for Indiana. Well, this is sort of that. Indiana is going to do everything they can to keep the best player in Indiana in Indiana, but it feels like Ohio State's going to get first pick over the best player in Indiana and I feel like this is once again what it's what it's going to be this is how it is just in reverse and there's mutual interest Ohio State wants Caden Curry Caden Curry wants Ohio State this I feel pretty good about this one considering how early we are in the cycle Number five here, you have linebacker Sean Murphy from Virginia. 
Virginia is not a state you hear too often that Ohio State goes towards. It's going to be more and more, I think. Going to be more and more. Ohio State has been moving their way east, thanks in large part to Maryland and Rutgers joining the Big Ten. They've had some luck in Virginia lately. Uh, They got the number one running back in the country who's out of Virginia just in this past class. Kyle, time to refresh. What you just said. What you just said. Oh, refresh my my alcoholic beverage. (laughs) Sometimes I forget that they can see us, too. Um, (laughs) Yes. (laughs) <laughs> Hold on. Well, if it's time for Kyle to refresh. <laughs> I'll finish my beer, too. Um, lost my train of thought. Sorry. The... <laughs> TMC says he's going to get banned from these, knocking us off our tracks. No, it's cool. It's cool, TMC. Um Yeah, so Virginia, you know, we've seen them have success in New Jersey. We've seen them have success in Maryland. It just sort of feels like Virginia's the next step in that Ohio State's going to be involved for the best players in Virginia because Virginia Tech's not really anything right now, because Virginia's not really anything right now. The You know, it, it, the ACC in general is down, which is a good thing for Ohio State and Penn State, and Maryland, and Rutgers for sort of locking up the northern half of the coast. Mm -hmm. Well, wasn't it this class, or maybe it's next class, Ohio State has a kid from North Carolina. Yeah, Yeah. Evan Pryor. Yeah, uh, um, absolutely. Both of their running backs are out of ACC territory. One from Virginia, one from North Carolina in the 2021 class, absolutely. Yep. People made fun of the Big Ten for bringing in Rutgers, for bringing in Maryland, but what they were attempting to do as a conference was to rebrand Ohio State, not Ohio State, to rebrand the Big Ten as not the conference of the Midwest, but the conference of the North. North, yep. And as you see these kids from Maryland and New Jersey and even maybe down into Virginia and North Carolina, you're starting to see more of these players from these new population zones starting to commit to Big Ten teams. I'm all for that. I'm all for that. I would not be surprised to see the Tar Heels become a part of the Big Ten eventually. It makes a lot of sense from a lot of different perspectives. I'm still upset that Ohio State and yeah. North Carolina canceled their home and home. Didn't uh, they canceled that home and home? I was really looking forward to going to the football game. I know there was a basketball game last year, but you can't trying to go to a basketball game in either UNC or Duke is near impossible. And and the fact too that that tip off last year was at ten o'clock, there's no way. Sorry. Well, yeah, and I'm sure it's like yeah. Anyway, I anyway we need to <laughs> we need to stay focused. I had a, I had like two different yeah. tangents I wanted to get on. We need to stay focused. <laughs> um, Number six here, uh, we have linebacker Justin Medlock from Texas. So we're moving yeah. to the south southwest now. Yes, uh, Texas uh, is a is a really popular state. Ohio State's really come after and got some really top prospects out of as well. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're moving into a little bit less likely territory. I feel really good about the top five guys. Medlock is a guy that Ohio State's going to go after hard, but Medlock's also a guy that a lot of places are going to go after, you know, with a lot of effort. So uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on Medlock. Mm-hmm. And coming up at number seven. At? seven, number seven, we have defensive end Trey Bigsby from Florida. Now the question, Jerry. Yeah. We're at in Florida. Is this IMG? <laughs> um, I honestly forget. I don't have it written in the 
I don't have it written in our notes. Uh, but yeah, just a defensive end that is built the way Larry Johnson likes defensive ends. There's mutual interest. Yeah, I, you know. Well, let's let's. We're. I'm sorry. We're 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 running a little bit longer on this segment than I wanted to. Kyle, are you still in the chat, or did I just lose your video? Waiting on Kyle. We lost to Kyle. I'm here. There he is. Is your video connecting? I still just have me on video. There you are. I'm here. Uh oh. All right. There we are. Uh, yeah. Uh, Trey Bixby again. Just sort of feels like a Larry Johnson guy. There's mutual interest. Uh, William Johnson, who's a defensive back from Ohio State, coming in at eight. Nick Singleton, a uh, very talented running back from the state of Michigan. Um, there's a lot of really good running backs. Ohio State's brought in two in the 2021 class, assuming everything stays the way it should. So who knows what Ohio State's plans are for the 2022 class. Uh, there's a lot of great options both in Ohio and national guys who there is at least early on mutual interest in. So like I said, there's, there's a lot of potential. Did I, did I have something wrong in the notes, Kyle? Good. Yes. He's actually Trey, from Ohio. Trey Bixby's from Ohio. Um, Trey Bixby is from St. Edward. High school in Lakewood, Ohio. I must have messed up with my copying and my pasting. Uh, William Johnson, uh, Nick Singleton, and then uh, a guy to keep an eye on. Um, I don't think he's Ohio State's. In fact, I know he's not Ohio State's uh, first option. I, I know that Kyle continues to make. I, I mess up with my copies and my paste, huh? Where's Nick <laughs> Singleton from? Did I mess that one up too? I'm looking for you, buddy. Okay. I know Drew Allar is <laughs> from Ohio. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right. Yeah. Singleton's Singleton from, PA. from Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yes. I, I now see how I messed that copy and paste up. It was just sort of shifted. <laughs> anyway, uh, Drew Allar, uh, I think he's not Ohio State's first option at quarterback. Um their first option at quarterback is uh, Quinn Evers, but uh, Quinn Evers is everyone's first option at quarterback right now. That's just going to be difficult. He just sort of feels like a guy who's going to go to Oklahoma. Um, so uh, an Ohio quarterback who I really like, um, we'll, we'll see how this season goes, if there is a season and how he performs on that. But uh Drew Allar is a, is a guy who I want to definitely keep an eye on and whose name I want to mention sort of bringing in at the bottom of this list. Uh, he's from Medina, Ohio. All right, Kyle. I think that's it as far as talking about the 2022 class. I had to sort of zip through those last few. Um, but that's okay. Just we're uh, running a little over on time. So, Kyle, let's, uh, let's do an ad read. Let's uh, revisit our good friend, the Mad Canadian, and then we'll do some Ask Sloopcast questions. How does that sound? Sounds good. One thing that a lot of people don't really think about when they think of barbecue seasonings mm -hmm. is a really neat thing about what the Mad Canadian has with his seasonings is that not only is it good on your chickens, your, your beefs, your porks, your ribs, it's also good on your vegetables too. Uh, some of the things that he he put on here that be really good on some of your vegetables you may grill and you may you may steam them in some foil or if you're like Jared you may put them in the air fryer. But yeah, for us normal people, we would put them into the grill. <laughs> uh, some of the seasonings that he recommends here: the Mad Hatter, the Ope, Savory Brits Blend. Sonoran Heat, the Smoked, or the S&P Bud. S&P Bud is always a just a great seasoning just to put on anything. Yeah, your, your S&P Bud and your uh, Sonoran Heat, I feel like, are some great do-all seasonings. The Smoked as well, I feel like, if you just, I'm not sure what to put on this one, just reach for the S&P Bud and you'll be fine. Uh, he wants us to know that the old-fashioned makes great 
sauteed apples. Kyle, have you ever sauteed an apple? The only time I ever did any any kind any kind of seasoning on apples is just like cinnamon. Yeah, but he's talking about a sauteed apple. You ever sauteed no, an apple? I haven't. I don't. I have not. No. I don't think I've ever cooked an apple. Um, I'm not a baker. Well, I know a lot of people I mean, make apple pies. He says, oh my I know, God, I know, my, lost my, everything. Not sure what my, that my is. My mother has sauteed apple with cinnamon, but never, I, I personally never have though. Okay. I'll, I'll take your, I'll take, I'll take uh, the, the Mad Cadian's word for it. Old fashioned, according to him, makes a, is, works fantastic is it, to put onto sauteed apples. There you go. I mean, I'm, I, I know I've personally like made cocktails with apple slices in them before. So it makes and bourbon based, I should point out bourbon based cocktails with apple slices. So it makes perfect sense to me. Mm-hmm. If you like bourbon, you'll like the old fashioned because it's, it's, it's bourbon and it's cherry. How can you go wrong with that? Yes. Be sure to check out all the great seasonings over at the mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the mad Canadian BBQ.com. Be sure to use the promo code sloopcast one zero. 10% off the entire order. That I think Canadian barbecue company where they have your butt covered. I think when he said that he lost everything, I think he just sort of lost communication with us <laughs> because he hopped out of the room and hopped back in. I was trying to decipher what that meant. All right. See, it's, it's user, user error. User, it's always <laughs> user error with TMC. All right. All right. Let's get into the, the last tidbits here that we have here. Uh, ACC and the SEC came out with their schedule announcements here. Uh, to no surprise, the ACC uh, doing a 10-game conference just like the Big Ten, but they added in one additional out-of-conference, which I thought was a little we're, different. We're all pretending Notre Dame's in the ACC this year, apparently. Well, no. They're including... The part of the 10-game oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. conference is Notre Dame. Yeah. Dude. So they're also, for this year only, which I imagine probably is going to change, and I think the writing's in, on the wall here, Notre Dame is eligible for the ACC championship. But you know what? This is just going to be leverage for them to join the conference in the future here. Because I think they're – I think they – you are using common sense. It be done for Notre Dame to not try to join the ACC after this You're year. using common sense, which is a dangerous thing when talking about Notre Dame. This is a desperate times, desperate measures maneuver. Once Notre Dame is not desperate and they have options, they will just choose to be independent because that's Notre Dame and that's what they do. All right, Kyle. Um, yeah, ACC, SEC, Big 12, or not? excuse me, not the Big 12, have announced not their schedules, but their scheduling formats. Uh, Big 12 has not done that yet. The Big 10 has not done that yet. Uh, it's at least not at time of, 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 of press. At the time of recording, they have not done that yet. I, it Interesting doesn't thing it, about the does not matter to me in all honesty because any schedule right now is just written in pencil Mm -hmm. the the interesting thing with the sec they're doing the same formula formula as the big 10 doing a 10 game conference only but they're starting week four we're going to start on september 26th so that doesn't give them a lot of leeway room they said they give that gives them two weeks of options to kind of mess around with their scheduling. Yeah, I I would assume you'd start as early as possible and then if stuff happens start as early as week zero. Start as early as week zero. Which I think is what some, you know it like it's all written in pencil. It it it, it doesn't matter. They're going to they're gonna do all this mm-hmm. stuff, and games are going to get canceled, and games are going to get moved. This is why all of the conferences are doing insulated conference schedules to allow for maneuvering of the schedules. It doesn't matter. 
it none of this matters <laughs> because they're just going to reshuffle it later and games are going to get canceled games are going to get moved it's everyone's like can't wait for the big 10 schedule i don't care i don't care because it's just a suggestion right now All right, Kyle, you want to do some Ask Sloopcast? Yes, sir. Let's let's get to it here. All right. Uh, let's see. Jared the Buckeye gives us uh, a trio of questions here. Let's 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 hit these up real quick. Are you sure this isn't you? This is your uh, this is your a, second account here. This is not my second account. Is Jared Ohio at Jared Ohio on Twitter, and I never use it. So. <laughs> You guys can follow it if you want to. I, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jared the Buckeye says, over under five and a half Red Bulls a day for carry combs. You know, first looking at that, I would love to say over. Carry mm-hmm. Coombs seems more of like Combs. a coffee person to me. He is a coffee person. So that it, if we're talking about five and a half caffeine drinks, it's over. But if we're talking specifically Red Bulls, it's under. Yes. <laughs> Kyle's ashamed because he mispronounced his name again, aren't you? Yes, yes, yes. All right, second one from Jared the Buckeye. Should there be a changing of the guard at linebacker? Um, I know Tuff gets all sorts of... I know Tuff gets all sorts of hate, but when, but with the talent at the linebacker from the 2018 class, is it time to have better talent in there? I think you're making an assumption that Tuff isn't the better talent. And I don't necessarily think that's a correct assumption. And by no, the it, way, it's not always talent. No. It's got to be on the scheming, too, depending on the type of offense that has it's going to play. And we talked about in a couple of the episodes during the fall is that Tough wouldn't be in a lot of the plays when it's a passing scenario where you're going to have Pete Warner in there where he's able to drop back into coverage a lot better than Tough Bordley would, too. So I think it would be the same case here, too. Tough would be in... A lot of a lot of the plays, but anytime it's a passing situation or it's a team that tends to pass a lot more, like like Indiana, essentially, who loves to pass, um, do a lot more passing plays. Though we wouldn't see tough in as many of those plays. Yeah, it's it's situational, and that's that's fine. It's okay to have tough Borland mm-hmm. in there on first and second downs and to put someone with a bit more speed in on third downs. That's fine. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. And there is something to be said about rewarding leadership and rewarding practice players. Because, you know, some people, you have to put the most talented guy on the field. Not necessarily. Mm-hmm. Because if the most talented guy on the field slacks off in practice and you still start him despite the fact he slacks off in practice, you create a culture where participating in, and I'm talking in generalities now, I'm not talking about anyone in particular, you create a culture where practicing doesn't matter as opposed to Mm -hmm. practice as a competition. And, you know, it's not necessarily always about playing the most talented guy because you also have to know the scheme. You have to know the... It comes down to more than simply physical talent, which Tuff isn't the most physically talented guy, but there's amazing knowledge there, experience, leadership, and all of those things do matter. But he's also not nearly as athletically hampered as many of you make him sound to be. Yeah. It almost sounded Trestle-like there for a moment. But Urban did the same thing. To a degree, yeah. Not to a degree. He absolutely did the same thing. All right. Look look at the wide receiver spot throughout the few years where we know 
that less talented wide receivers stayed on the field more because of what they contributed to the football team. You could make the argument that that was JT Barrett. You know what I mean? One last question. What from uh, Jared, the Buckeye, the Buckeyes pull off the number one class in both the 2021 and the 2022 class. Do you, do you believe there will be multiple national championships in the next five years? All right, so first we have if, and we already talked in in length that we believe they will have the number one class in 2021. We've we've established that we believe that. 2022, and Jared's not asking us to predict that that's what's going to happen. He is simply saying, okay, for the sake of this scenario, it happens. Mm -hmm. Um, It's hard to say multiple um, because it comes down so much to quarterback. College football is a quarterback's game. You know, you want to talk about, are you going to revisit what we were talking about with Georgia earlier in the podcast? What if, let's play the what if scenario. What if Ohio State, or excuse me, what if Georgia had benched from, much like Clemson did, and brought in their freshman quarterback who was better? Mm-hmm. Where is Georgia then, now under fields? Yeah. It's just going to come. We'll find out next year too, whoever house state's quarterback is going to be and how well, how well they performed though. I, yeah. I, I 100% agree with Jared. It is a quarterback driven um, sport. Yeah. And it, it depends so much on the quarterback. Even in years where Ohio State didn't have a great quarterback, look at look at this picture right behind me, Jared. This yeah. quarterback right here. He didn't he wasn't the best quarterback. He's Craig not Krenzel for everyone who doesn't Your camera's not that great, Kyle. It's Craig Krenzel. Please yes. continue. Um wasn't known as a great quarterback in Ohio State lore, but you no. know what? He was a great leader and he mm-hmm. made plays when he had to do that. But also that was two thousand two. Yes. And almost that, 20 years ago. Yeah. That that's a different game. Mm. We, we, we are not taught, you know, <laughs> college football has changed a lot. You did not need to have, I don't know if you win a national championship with either Ken Dorsey or Craig Krenzel now. Yeah. Now the, what saves both of those teams is how amazing their defenses were. Oh, yeah. Defenses were amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So, but I, I don't know if you, I don't know if you won a national championship in 2020 with Dorsey or Krenzel. All right. So the original question: Do we believe there will be multiple national championships? It's impossible. It's just impossible. It just what what? So here's your scenario: You get C.J. Stroud, and let's let's just say it's C.J. Stroud wins the job next year. And then Jack Miller transfers because he loses the job. This is a a highly possible thing. CJ Stroud then gets hurt. And then what do you do? (laughs) You know what I mean? And, you know. Jared's beating around the bush. I'm going to actually answer the question. (laughs) From what we saw saw last year under first year of Coach Day, yeah, and what we've seen of him in his offense here—not so much the quarterback read type of offense. This is a more spread the load out type of offense compared to what Urban Meyer did. I believe so. Yes, and a couple of things here. One, I think the offense is a lot more um, stable. Again. Probably a lot of it is because you have this stud of a quarterback. Can I, can I sub out stable both. with dynamic? And dynamic, yep. Well, it, Urban's offense in was incredibly stable, maybe too stable. <laughs> Here's the other thing, too. How much longer does Saban stay at Alabama, too? True, but, you know, I think Clemson is the lead dog right now and not Bama. 
But yeah, get, getting rid of Saban at Bama certainly helps. That's, of, mm-hmm. of course, it helps. So Possibly, yeah. Uh, to, so ever, to ever predict... Look at Clemson right now. I mean, that was one of the best... You had three of the best college football teams ever in the playoff last year. There's never been a better collection of playoff teams and that, that sounds weird to say because the playoffs aren't that old. But even if you retroactively created playoffs going backwards throughout the last 20 years, was there ever a better collection of three teams? There's been a number of... That LSU team, uh, that Clemson Irish team, that Ohio State teams. team. Yeah, there's been a great number of like two teams in a in a playoff year but i can't really think of like three could have been the very first year but no oregon in that national championship game just did not show up other than that first drive yeah it it, it, they're they're a pac-12 team it is what it is (laughs) yeah i just all right right, we need to we need need to move move on here next question here um sun card 19 asks us what state outside of ohio is the most important for the bucks to recruit that is a really interesting question because of the number of states Ohio State does go after. Florida and Texas are two of the big ones. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned earlier in today's episode, New Jersey and Maryland have also been key states. Ohio State's gone af- after Virginia. the past number of years, too. Virginia recently, too. So what is the most important state? To me, I, th- I think it's as much as talent Ohio State has gotten out of Texas and even even of those recruits who become first round picks, I think it's gotta still be Florida. I mean you got Bosa both Bosa's mm-hmm. out of Florida there and a number of other athletes too from Florida. So I I think it's gotta be Florida for Ohio State. Yeah. Um you're not wrong. I think Texas deserves to be in that conversation. I think Virginia is a state we now have to look at as a part of that conversation. Georgia was that state a few years ago, but with Georgia so high and Clemson, who's right there on the border of of, of Georgia, it's going to be really, really hard to get elite players out of Georgia right now with those teams recruiting the way they're recruiting right now. So a few years ago, I would have said Georgia, but probably not because it, that, that's just, that seems very uh, overly difficult right now. And you got the other SEC schools right there on the board, or you have Florida, Alabama, LSU, Auburn, and all them just right there too. Yeah. I think, I think the I think the correct answer that's maybe not as obvious as Texas and Florida. I mean, Texas and Florida, that's going to be the correct answer from now forever, or it's going to be in the conversation of the correct answer from now until forever. More immediately, I think Virginia is an important state as well as Maryland, but I'm going to say Virginia for right now to to keep an eye on because it's just sort of Ohio State, not just cherry picking out of a state, but almost like increasing their borders it feels Mm -hmm. a little bit more significant than simply cherry picking if you can start to make severe inroads into the state of virginia all right we've got a pair of questions from our good friend the mad canadian our first question he asks us do you think we'll see more or less movement from justin fields in terms of design runs because of our running back core this year well, Less. If you watch the you watch the dream team from the Buckeye scoop on the on YouTube, uh it would you there's a lot more running for Justin Fields, but it's a video game. Yeah. Just wanted to make a joke, but um I I honestly think there's gonna be less. Yeah. Ohio State's gonna be rotating those running backs a lot more. Uh I just saw that uh Trey Sermon um has his number picked out now. Yeah. Number four? No, number four? we thought it was going... Well, yes, yes. He was number four this, before. He's going to be eight, I believe, is what the number is. Now, 
But anyway, I I I mocked up a, a Photoshop to use as a touchdown card for his old Oklahoma number, and now that I've wasted all that time because he's not <laughs> going to do that now. But that's okay. Um, uh, they'll be running back by committee. Um, it, now, if you're talking about designed runs, which is what you said in the question, there will be much less, much, much less. Now he might end up having more runs overall this year, because I think this is going to be a pass first offense. Last year, the offense started with JK Dobbins this year. It will start with Justin Fields. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, I, Justin Fields had superior numbers. Justin Fields was a F- Heisman finalist, so to say. But schematically speaking, not necessarily statistically speaking, but schematically speaking, it was J.K. Dobbins first, Justin Fields second. This year, with the mm-hmm. depth and talent at wide receiver right now, with Justin Fields now in his second year in the offense, you ain't seen nothing yet as far as Justin Fields. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's not forget about Master Teague, too. Master yeah. Teague, minus the last game or two. Crawley season, as well. He, he I think in. we're going to see a deep running back rotation this year. I completely agree, yes. Let's not forget about those two uh, for... Or how stay in the running back core. Absolutely. Uh, the other question our good friend Mad Canadian asks us, if the Big Ten has a season, there are no bowl games or championships, what is the likelihood of a Fields three season at the Ohio State University? Zero. Zero no, chance. Doesn't. No. This is his this is his second and last season at Ohio State, period. Yeah. Yeah, there's under no circumstances, spring seasons, injury, success or lack thereof this season, a complete cancellation of this season, whatever the scenario is, Justin Fields is going to be drafted by an NFL team next year, period. If he and if there is a season this year and he does just as good as he did last year, even even relatively good as he did last year, solid, solid first round pick. Uh, yeah, it'll be. I mean, it depends solid. upon who needs quarterbacks and blah blah blah. But if we're talking more from a big board perspective, it's him and Lawrence. Lawrence might be like one A and Fields is one B. So maybe a slight edge to Lawrence, but he'll he'll be the second, no worse than the second quarterback off the board in next year's draft. All right, uh, what do we got here? Suncard asks, what is the ideal, acceptable, and terrible scenarios for the schedule of the Michigan game in 2022? So the terrible scenario ideal. is that it doesn't happen. Yes, that is the terrible, ideal. They see them. Tw- they see them once a year. It's like we do in the end of November. I would say that's acceptable. That's ideal for me. Acceptable would be seeing them twice a year. Seeing them at the end of the year, then a week later at the champ and at the conference championship game. Listen, we might be looking at a really stupid season. You might be looking at a season with no postseason. We might be looking at a season with no playoff and no bowl games and no Big Ten championship. We don't know what this season's going to be. Let's just create meaning. <laughs> Let's create some meaning by playing Michigan as many times as necessary or possible. And I like what you brought up either last week or a couple weeks ago. It was a few Let's weeks. play them more so we can catch up. Thank you. Thank you. I don't I, I don't have it in front of me, but I think Ohio State is seven games behind in the all time series. Is it's something like that. It's something like seven games behind. Let's do it. Let's get it all done this year. Let's get it done. I don't care. Again, 
It is seven. Yep, it is seven. Ohio State is seven games by. Let's, let's, play, let's, play, eight, let's, let's play them eight times this yes. year. Beat them all eight times. Yes. We might not. This might just be one big exhibition season with no national champion, with no Big Ten champion, not on the field anyway for those two things. Not a thing that's actually settled but with a football game. Let's add some meaning to what might end up being a stupid exhibition of a season by going after that Michigan Ohio state all-time record. So ideal more, whatever more is, is all I'm going to say for I'd terrible. It doesn't happen. Acceptable is once ideal more. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not even going to put a number on it. I'm just going to say more. All right. Uh, more questions uh, from Duncan from the Discord. Duncan from the Discord. Is the cancellation is the cancellation of the Red Box Bowl really a COVID issue, or can we all be honest that it's pos- probably because I can't remember the last time I saw a Red Box? I saw a Red Box at Kroger. I I, I see yeah, Red Boxes. I see Red Boxes from the time to time, but I haven't rented from one no. in a long time. No, Lord, no. What did I mean, we call that last? Year? What did we call that last December? Oh, we called it the Netflix Bowl. Yes, the Netflix Bowl. If we have any new <laughs> listeners, we or we may have called it the Blockbuster Bowl. Actually, well, yes, you are right. It is the Blockbuster. We refuse yes. to use sponsor names, so. <laughs> He said, uh, TMC says, well, you two RIT guys. I don't remember the last time I watched a physical copy of a movie. I could not tell you the last time I popped the DVD in and watched it. Yeah. I could not tell you. Me, it's, it'd probably be The Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> or Blue, yeah, or Blu-ray. Have- I'm, I'm talking any physical media, TMC. Blu-ray, mm-hmm. DVD, whatever. I don't remember the last time I've done anything like that. Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah. We, we, if you're if you're a new listener to the Sloopcast, we always uh, use a non. We 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 never use the sponsor name, and we normally sub it out for a different sponsor name. It's just a joke we do during the bowl season. It, we have a lot of fun with it. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but yeah, it, it's. Don't start TMC with your trash beer takes. You're just starting to mm-hmm. start something when we're already like 12 minutes gonna, over. I'm going to save that for next episode. Right, no, one won't. last question from Duncan. Last question from the from Duncan. Free B deck tickets or stay at home? B deck tickets are not created equal. Yes. B deck tickets could be just as good as A deck. Uh, one of the best seats, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna underline the word seats because it's a game in which I actually sat down. Because the most fun I've ever had at Ohio State games were in the quote unquote open end in the student section. But you're not sitting, and you don't really even have seats because even though you have a, a seat on the ticket, that's all general admission over there. <laughs> seat assignments in the student section are a suggestion at best. But one of the best actual seats I've ever had was it was basically like right in the middle, 50 in between the forties B deck row one, because you have that concrete barrier right in front of you. So I put my drink on it, put my notch. I basically had a table in front of me. And I think it was, I think was it the, Indiana game the year Ohio State won the national title and and so it would have been 2014 Um, my memory sucks but I want to say towards the end of that game it started like snowing and I mean like that wet gross snow so to have that little bit of an awning was was pretty great (laughs) you, you, you have C over top of you why why am I a child why am I a child, TMC? To have that little bit of an awning above, that's fantastic. I don't know what you're talking about, but okay. 
The on it's when when you're in B deck, C is over your head. So if there's yeah, I I know that. But... <sighs> All right, it's nice to be younger um... than someone. TMC. <laughs> Interesting, interesting conversation I had. I know we're running really long on, on time here, but interesting conversation I had with a colleague, though, who, who lives in the state of Alabama. Uh, suge- suggestion that I, that I said, I said, if there's any kind of recommendations in terms of who can be in stadiums, just say, because Ohio State came out and said that, oh, there would be, they could only have a maximum of 20% or 20, 21,000 uh, fans in the stadium. Right. Why not make it just, just the band and the students and have them all spread out across the A deck then? They're all spread out, so they're not all on top of each other. They're just all covered in the bottom. That way you can get the, the, TV, pr- the TV view and you yeah. see fans in those first few rows there. You want to know the answer to that question? Money. They're not the ones donating millions of dollars to the university. That's why. Second, you don't necessarily want all students in there because you know who's going to fight the rules about staying separated and staying socially distanced the most? The students. (laughs) So it's my suggestion. I know it will never happen, but. Yeah, I had it my way. That's how I would. Do also, it. the students don't pay as much for the tickets, no. and they don't donate like the season ticket holders donate to the university. And like I said, they're not going to respect the social distancing rules that will be in place as much as the adults will. Yep, you're right. That's all the questions we have for today. And that well, is the end it for the episode. That is, yeah, that's it for that's it for the episode. Um, we have a new linking system. Uh, if you check the show notes, we are now like one master link as Kyle's wearing his Zelda hat. And I use the term master link. <laughs> uh, we now have one master link. It's to a service called, um, campsite. You click on that and it has all of our stuff in it. it has our Twitter accounts in it. A link to the past, link to the future, we're, we're linking all over the place, TMC. Uh, yeah, the, it's, a, it's, it's an app called Campsite, and you you go to one link, and it shows you all of our links. So links to Apple Podcasts, links to our merch store, links to our Spotify page, links to our iHeartRadio page, links to our Twitter accounts, our Instagram account. Um, it just has links to all of this stuff, including our patron page. If you want to be like Austin or TMC and listen in live and send us questions and ask, ask for clarifications as you listen, uh, you can go to Patreon and contribute. Um, the, the lowest, you can contribute whatever you want, but to get access to the discord, you only need to meet the first tier, which is only $3 a month. How many is, what is that, Kyle? Ten cents a day? Ten cents a day. Ten cents a day. Ten cents a day, and you, and you can get, you it'd be part of a community that talks about beer and yeah. food and get some and seasoning, su- seasoning suggestions from our friend, the Mad Canadian. Yeah. Uh, why would some, you not? Some, just don't don't talk about beer with the Mad Canadian, though. He, he has some... Eh, he he's mostly good with his beer takes. He just has one really bad one. That's it. He just has one really bad beer take. For the most yeah. part, he drinks his Wolf's Ridge and he drinks some. Uh, yeah, so Ohio above all. I I absolutely agree with you, TMC. Ohio above all. But it doesn't mean that Yingling isn't also good for the price. That's all I'm saying. Yingling is very good for the price. That's all I'm saying. Shut up, TMC. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so that's it. That's the end of the show. Uh, Go to the master link, and it has links to all of our stuff, all the socials. 
uh, the merch store. Um, I've been designing a bunch of new t-shirts for the season. All the old t-shirts are still there. You can still buy them. But I'm designing a bunch of new shirts for the season. We're now on T Public. Uh, just because I decided they dis- they delivered a little bit better service than than uh, Teespring, who I had uh, some some issues with, um, and I think that's it. Uh, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, just a little update about the Columbus Crew. Fortunately, they yeah. had uh, they got knocked out in the first game in the um, in shootouts, though. Uh, they had their chances. They could have won it, should have, but that's the way the game is. So, but I still like what I've seen from the team, though. And with the injuries that they had going into that game, though, I still like their chances the rest of the season still. So I'm looking forward to seeing how the rest of the season plays out for the crew. Yeah, and I'm, you know, the new stadium will be up next year. I'm looking forward to it. I have my, uh, season ticket to the Nordeke. You guys should join me. We'll do Sloopcast meetups at, there's going to be a beer garden in the Nordeke. Let's do some Sloopcast meetups in the Nordeke. I'm going to be there. You should be there too. And you don't need a season ticket to get in there. You can just buy a ticket. (laughs) Kyle will be there in spirit and maybe once in, in, in real life. But yeah, come, come watch a soccer game with me. I'm going to be there for every home game in, in, if you don't know, the Nordeke is like the cheer section. It's it's the rowdy section where all the drums and smoke bombs and all that are. That That's where you can find me. Come to a game. Send me a message. We'll meet up. It'll be great. That's, that's all I got for today. All right. Uh, all right. Tonight's ending music will be by a Cleveland-based band who I have a lot of love for called The Cloud Nothings. Uh, You can check the show notes for the song title, and that's it. So with all of that being said, uh, you can – I messed it up, Kyle. I don't know how – I I messed up the intro last week, and now I'm I'm messing messing up the exit. So with all that being said, what? What would you say? I need help. I I, (laughs) need help. I I need a lot of help. You want to do it? Go ahead. (laughs) All right. I want to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the Cloud Nothings. And this is where the music goes. Sorry, YouTubers. Copyrights. YouTube's strict, yo. would like to thank the cloud nothings for ending today's episode and i would like to thank he left the chat he's gonna miss his third ad read come on tmc (laughs) i want to thank the mad canadian barbecue company for sponsoring today's episode and he's back he's back he almost missed his ad read (laughs) i just knocked my headphones out of my ear and now i can't hear myself and it's weird uh, I'm going to, I'm going to sponsor, I'm going to highlight the Brits blend. It's one of my favorites. It's a Southwest blend. They're all one of my favorites, by the way, in case you guys haven't figured that out. They're all one of my favorites. Uh, it's great in your salsa. It's great in your chili. I made, um, I made like a chicken pepper stir fry thing and I covered it in a bunch of Brits blend. It was fantastic. It was like fajitas, but you know, it was like fajitas. It was great. Um, probably would have also gone great on that would have been the Mad Hatter. Uh, the lime in there would, would go great with anything if you're trying to do something a little southwesty. Uh, and then, of course, the salt and then the pepper. Uh, it's red pepper. It's a chili pepper. So it's like lime. It's chili pepper. It's salt. It's fantastic. Uh, let's see. Which one should I do next? Which one didn't we talk about before, Kyle? We talked about the S&P bud before. I'm not talking into the microphone. That's probably bad on on my end. Uh, There's the Cajun. I don't feel like we've talked about the Cajun in a long time. You guys know what Cajun is. It's a, I mean, it's Cajun. It's cumin-y, it's spicy, but it's not too spicy. It's fantastic. Uh, 
we don't we don't have a crazy name on that one. It's just called the Cajun. If you like Cajun, you'll you'll like this because Mad Canadian doesn't put a bunch of junk in it, and the camera will not. Fo- there we go. Camera's back on me now. Um, but you know, it's paprika e, it's coriander e. It's fantastic. It's it's everything you want in a Cajun blend. And you know, we already mentioned the old fashioned a few times, but Mad Canadian want, wanted to be sure to let you know that it is back in stock. I don't know how long it's going to be back in stock because he sold out of it pretty quick the first time, but it's back in stock. So use the promo code SLOOPCAST10, that's SLOOPCAST10, at checkout. <laughs> DMC said in the chat, Kyle looks bored during Jared's ad read, and Kyle said that's because I ran out of alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> and it made me laugh. Uh, check out that and a lot more over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Again, if you go to the master link, there's a link to the Mad Canadian right there on that page. So h- hit that master link and then find the Mad Canadian in the master link. Use, like I said, use promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout. Get 10% off your entire order. doesn't matter if you buy one thing or 12. You can get 10% off your entire order with SloopCast10 at checkout. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, he has your butt covered. Right. 